Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook in a session for July 3rd, 2020, recorded around 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, taking a look here at the latest sea surface temperature anomalies last updated as of yesterday, July the 2nd, we continue to notice in this area in the equatorial Pacific, this area right through here, that is continuing to wax and wane with temperatures, but overall, the overall larger scale pattern is to be about a half a degree to a degree Celsius, even in some cases, a full two degrees Celsius below the long-term average in these areas in the Nino 3.4 area, extending all the way out to off the coast of South uh, America there. And that will be continuing to occur here over the next several weeks to months as we get a background easterly wind burst to occur across this region, only continuing to favor this upwelling pattern. What tends to happen is you get a lot of this upwelling that occurs through here, and that will spread out through this area and cool it off, suggesting a La Nina background, uh, an atmospheric background by the time we get into the winter, the, the fall and winter, of this year and beyond we will at least be looking at a cool neutral like we have now we will likely be looking at a cool neutral pattern by the time we get set up into the fall and winter of this year and conversely in the Atlantic Basin we continue to notice this area of fairly warm anomalies stretching all the way to the Florida Gulf Coast there and really this whole area is well above the long-term average in cases you almost can notice this like almost little horseshoe shape uh, signature here that is very indicative of that positive phase one AMO signature. We will likely be seeing a reducement or reduction in the trade winds across this area over the next several weeks or so that will promote even further warming of the main development region, which is now sitting at about a half a degree to a degree Celsius above the long-term average in spots with this very warm anomaly out here, fairly warm sea surface temperatures even all the way into the Florida area and uh, near Baham the Bahamas and the Western Antilles, Barbados, water temperatures are very warm. Water temperatures are also very warm out here across portions of the northern, northern Atlantic Basin, the northwestern subtropical Atlantic, with a cooler pattern looking through here that is suggesting that this will not be filling in with any sort of basin-wide warmth. And we did have a, a viewer uh, question a viewer question yesterday on yesterday's discussion talking about the Saharan air event. And we will actually talk about that here in just a minute. So stay tuned for that. Now, take a look here at the sea surface temperature, or not the sea surface temperature, but the upper ocean heat content temperatures. This is basically taking a look at how far does your 80 degree isotherm, your 80 degree temperature line go down in the water. Once you start getting literally up into the the reds here you're getting at the very high end of the scale really this upper third from these greens all the way to the reds are very significant uh, upper ocean heat content values which you're very well seeing here pronouncedly showing up here in the Caribbean and even into the Gulf of Mexico and the Bahamas We'll zoom in here and just kind of give you a very quick look at that. And you do notice how these water temperatures, the, the, these ocean, upper ocean heat content values are very warm and very deep down into the ocean across this area. And that is very significant for two reasons. One, because as a hurricane or a tropical cyclone will come along and, and if any cycle, uh, tropical system does come along into these upper ocean heat content values, let's say you have a very big patch of red out here, a tropical cyclone would come to take advantage of that. It would not upwell cooler and cooler water. It would instead upwell warmer water. And warmer water equals stronger systems in a in a theoretical environment where all else is favorable. If a storm was to move into this environment out in here, it would be very favorable. We'll highlight that with better color. That is a very favorable environment out there. And that suggests that if something were to come and take advantage of that, it would be something to watch. And we're really starting to see these values really be pumped up here, even to the, the southwestern Atlantic. You notice basically everywhere I'm highlighting has very significant upper ocean heat content values, very significant numbers that if the system were to come take advantage of that, that would be a sign of robustness and would allow strengthening in a, in a favorable environment, all else being equal. So... These upper ocean heat content values, especially in the Caribbean and the Bahamas, 
are literally in the upper end of the distribution, basically the upper third to almost the, you know, off the scale, upper fourth, basically, of the scale. So a very significant amount of upper Shahi content out here in the Bahamas, Southwest and Southwest Atlantic, as well in the Caribbean. Very warm, and even out here in the main development region, that's starting to warm up quite nicely as well and should continue throughout the next several months or so. Now, taking a look at the actual sea surface temperatures, this is coming off the CS methodology from tropicaltippets.com, initialized and, and analyzed. This morning at about 7 o'clock in the morning, you do notice that water temperatures are very warm in the Gulf of, Me or Gulf of Mexico and southwestern Atlantic, very, very warm. And even out here, 29, uh, 28, 29 Celsius off the, the Texas, Louisiana coastline there, very warm here across the Bahamas, Nassau looking at about 31 to 32 Celsius, extremely warm. And that uh, equivalates to about 93 to 94 Fahrenheit. And that is very significant because if something comes along and takes advantage over these very warm waters, even in the Gulf Stream, we'll talk about something uh, that's something that's maybe trying to sit out here over the next few days. But if something comes along to take advantage of that, especially a system that's already well developed, this has the potential of a very significant problem in the making. And that's not to scare anybody, that's not to hype anybody, that's not to be any of that. However, this is a very significant area of warmth into the Florida, uh, you know, off the Florida coast here in, in the Nassau region, in the Bahamas. Very significant warmth in, in the Gulf of Mexico, you know, and these aren't necessarily shelf waters. I mean, out here, 29, 30 Celsius, that is not shelf water. You know, that's not shelf water you're getting. That's water going down deep. And that upper ocean heat content out here is very, very concerning that if something comes along to take advantage of that, that has the potential for a very significant thing in the making. So very interesting to monitor how that is attributing over the next several weeks to months. You notice out here in the southeastern Pacific water temperatures, 29, 30 Celsius. So very warm out here. Off the islands, we're looking at uh, near Barbados, about 29 uh, to near 30 Celsius out there. And in the Caribbean, all along about 28 to 30 Celsius out here. So very warm here in the southwestern Atlantic. You also notice out here in the Gulf Stream, very warm as well, about uh, anywhere from about 27 to 30 Celsius. So very warm out there as well. Now, how does this relate and what's going on now? Well, you do see a very compact little system here. Now, this has not officially been tagged by the National Hurricane Center. No outlined risk as of right now. However, it is very interesting. There is a little bit of spin in the atmosphere down here. And this is sitting roughly over these very warm waters with these nice upper ocean heat content values over this area that's about anywhere from about 28 to 27 Celsius. So it's certainly warm enough to support tropical cyclones. And if we zoom in here further, you notice that there has been some lightning over the past couple of minutes. This is from the uh, the weathernerds.org site, by the way. But you do notice how we, we are starting to see this, this area of convection kind of concentrate potentially there is a nice envelope of energy now there is not a true low level center in here you actually notice what what happens is there is a mid-level vortex a or a kind of a meso vortex that is that was kind of coming down here and kind of spiraling through here it actually got pulled into some of this northern area of convection and you can kind of see that area of spin that actually starts right about here that's kind of where the, it spins and kind of drifts over there and you can kind of see how that evolves we'll just kind of play this at a very slow pace here but you notice how that, that generally evolves over the last few frames is that we've seen some activity try to fire near this area. This overall larger envelope of energy out here with some convection, you know, some uh, deeper convection with some lightning in there. So this is an area sitting over, you know, 28, you know, 27 Celsius degree water, you know, that's very favorable for tropical cyclones. Uh, deeper upper ocean heat content, more anomalously so, and this is where things start to really matter. And you know, these sea surface temperature anomalies out here are about a, a full half a degree to a degree Celsius above the long term average out in this area. So there is something to monitor here over the next several days or so as this will kind of be just meandering around before finally getting kind of pulled because of a, a trough. This will finally be, be 
getting pulled on out to sea. So no real significant land concerns at this time. But we are going to continue to watch here over the last several days or over the next several days or so. As this will be continuing to be something to monitor. You also notice some a very deep convection setting up over almost the whole state of Louisiana. And the portions of uh, southwestern Arkansas there. So certainly something to monitor with some outflow there. Residual convection over here in the Gulf of Mexico. No significant concerns at that time as well. The larger scale Atlantic viewing as it rains cats and dogs out there, basically. <laughs> and the larger Atlantic uh, scale, you're basically noticing all, all of this drier uh, air out here. So nothing really going on. Very quiet, some tropical wave action in the intertropical convergence zone out here. But, you know, that big tropical wave that we were seeing yesterday did kind of just kind of dissipate into a little bit of remnant uh, area of convection. But again, we're not really seeing anything try to bundle. This is our little system attached to our kind of area of, of low pressure and basic troughiness out there here but really not expecting anything to develop but you always got to watch these little sneaky systems as they can certainly develop another big upper level low that's kind of just sitting out here not really doing much and expected to develop at all so that's kind of that for the Atlantic basin and for the eastern pacific basin as well we're seeing some energy try to bundle down here but we're really not seeing anything going and the National Hurricane Center really only has about two areas highlighted, both with a minimal chance of developing over the next several days or so. No significant land concerns at this time for the Baja of California or the uh, Cabo San Lucas Resort areas, Central America or Mexico coastlines. No significant concerns to land at this time at all. Now, taking a look here at the 850 millibar vorticity, this is the spin in the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground. Uh, for context, these reds and whites indicate your higher cyclonic spin at the 5,000 foot level, basically like what you are seeing up there on the northern kind of fringes of your screen out there. This is our little system out here that's in the southwestern Atlantic off the Carolina and Florida coastline. Again, not really seeing any signs of significant development with this, but again, we always have to watch these little mesovortex systems because they can spin up very quickly. We saw that with Hurricane Arthur in 2014 around this time, around the 4th of July time. So just something to monitor, but again, not really expecting any significant development and certainly no land impacts from this at all. A little bit of energy is situated over Florida right now that's bringing some uh, heavy rain for, to portions of the Florida, uh, the Florida Peninsula there, so... That will kind of be meandering around throughout the next several days or so, but finally, this area of vorticity will also kind of get kicked off as well. And we're also watching these areas of disturbances out here in the eastern Pacific Basin as well, but we're really not seeing any significant concerns to the land masses at this time. So really, you know, the eastern Pacific Basin might get a little bit more active over the next several days or so in the next several weeks, but we're not really seeing a longer term pattern that would suggest any significant land concerns at this time for anywhere in the eastern Pacific Basin at all. Now, looking at the vertical wind shear here, this is our little system that we were talking about just a minute ago off the Carolina Florida coastline under an area of very light shear and in an anticyclonic flow. So this is in an area of favorable environment over the next day or so. And in a, a favorable area that this has some area to kind of work within, favorable upper ocean heat content, favorable sea surface temperatures, uh, just a favorable overall pattern. So this is something we're going to be monitoring here over the next several days or so, but again, no, con uh, no significant concerns to land also notice out here in the main development region we're actually continuing to lessen some of the shear out there as we're progressively getting our shear to weaken across this area but still strong upper level winds are prevailing in dry air basically dominating this area for right now although that's going to change here over the next several weeks or so and this is one of the things that I thought was very interesting, the European uh, total precipitation anomaly in inches. Uh, this is coming off the, the Euro EPS through about the next 30 days through August the 1st. And basically where you're seeing basically just these greenish and then bluish anomaly or bluish colors here, this is indicating your more favorable pattern for a very wet and active a Sahil region and African easterly wave area. And basically everywhere where you're seeing these browns and reddish, that is your drier than normal precipitation area. But you basically notice almost all of Africa where these uh, African easterly waves come from, these tropical waves, is just green lights a go. I mean, you talk about coming off the coast of Africa. This is the Cabo Verde Islands out here. That's the Cabo Verde Islands or the Cape Verde Islands. 
And just to the south of there, I mean, this is a very, very significant looking pattern for these stronger tropical waves to come off, being, being more frequent. And it's only a matter of time before something tries to get going. And it would not surprise me uh, through the 1st of August if we tried to get some sort of development in the month of July out there east of the Lesser Antilles in the main development region. So we're going to keep monitoring everything. Again, it's not all set in stone. There is some factor, other factors that are contributing to if, if or not something will develop. However, it is going to be something that we're going to be watching very delicately over the, and, and very precisely over the next several days or so. So make sure to tune back to our updates and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you guys do want consistent updates and enable notifications to also get notified when I do post a video. Now, taking a look here, this is from tropicaltidbits.com. The 12Z GFS forecast model valid as of 1 o'clock this afternoon. Looking at the 850 vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere, 5,000 feet off the ground. <clears throat> you do notice that we do see this tropical wave that begins to add, uh, begins to eject off of the Cabo Verde Islands. You notice how it, it's a tropical wave. you got these very kind of looking cyclonic wind barbs. There's a little bit of turning in there. You also notice that the, the isobars are kind of kinked in through here. This is indicative of this lower than normal pressure uh, that is coming through that area at that time. But again, nothing really expected to develop. Even out to hour 180, you're not really seeing much in the way of development. Now, some Things might go on here in the southeastern Pacific Basin over the next several weeks or next several days to a week or so, but we're really not seeing a pattern that suggests any land concerns. And looking at the European forecast model, we're also seeing a strong tropical wave that begins to eject off of Africa. You also notice that the European forecast model to hour 144 is trying to develop something out here off the Carolina coastline, although again, we'll see if anything does occur or not, but really in, in total, the European is forecasting most of the southeastern Pacific to be becoming more active over the next several days to a week or so. So we will be watching that. But again, no significant land concerns to anybody at this time. Again, really the only one system we have to watch in the Atlantic is this little feature right here. But it is not tropical at the moment. And it is not expected to go on to develop. But of course, we do have to keep monitoring this over the next several days or so. So that, that with that being said... Have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you guys do want to get up-to-date notification as, as to what we're doing with our unmanned camera system project, our hurricane cameras. I will link that. If you guys do want to see the promo to that, I will link that at the beginning of this video in the, in the eyes to the sky, basically. And as well, make sure to go follow me on Twitter. Links will be in, in the description down below. Hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. I am Michael Romali, and I will be back with you more for you tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day. Have a great 4th of July. If you guys aren't with us tomorrow, I'll see you back here tomorrow. Stay safe, everyone.